As we continue here uh, on phase number three of our message, we are talking about one of the signs of the preparation for the end time, better known as the beast. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. I've got about ten more minutes to talk to you. Listen to this, though. Let's finish hearing what Jesus had to say, which is very important. He said, Take heed that no one deceives you, uh, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and will deceive many. And they will hear, and you will hear, of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. Yesterday or last week, we talked about, amen, uh, the fact that we are now dealing with a lot of troubled people. And let me say something about that, because some people are starting to jump out of windows like they did in 1932 during the Depression. Some people, suicide is up, alcohol is up 60-some percent. There's going to be a lot of stress put on people as they lose their loved ones, and many of them lose their own lives. Now is the time to see God as never before, because we are right on the cusp of the tribulation period. Now, once God comes and takes the saints out, yes, I am a pre-tribulation uh, theorist, which says that I believe that Christ is going to come and take the church out before the tribulation period is allowed to go on. Now, the tribulation period is for seven years, three and a half, divided into two parts, three and a half for the Jews' judgment, and three and a half for the great tribulation. Now, the reason it's divided like that is because God is getting ready to take the church out of the existence of the earth and turn back to delivering and working with the Jews. If you go to Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3, you'll see he gives the uh, message to the final seven churches, amen, uh, of Asia Minor, which is seven church ages that he wanted us to see the church go through prior to Revelation chapter 4, where he turns back to the Jews and starts dealing with the Jews. Now, this is not going to be a picnic for no one. The Jews are going to lose two-thirds of their people. The United States is going to, well, the world is going to be millions of people going to lose their life. So you may as well get ready because as Jesus is going to say, as I move on, these are just the beginning of silence. But for those of you that are saved, you need to get on your knees every day, three times a day like Daniel did, and pray that God have mercy upon us and Israel. Now, for those of you that think the kingdom age has already started, I need to inform you, the kingdom age is going to come after the judgment. In fact, the judgment will be the first part of the kingdom age. The kingdom age is actually Christ's kingdom. Yes, the kingdom is at hand, but the church has not done its responsibility by bringing the Jews and the world together, which it was never programmed to be like that. God knew it would be like this. That's why he has 144,000 evangelists from Israel that's going to come and evangelize the world in the last uh, part of the three and a half years of Jewish judgment. Okay, I know this is a whole lot, and I'm running out of time, so I'm ripping and running. I'll probably go back over this a little bit to make sure that everything I said falls into place. It is very, very important. Okay, so now I'm going to go back up to the pulpit, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about reading from what Jesus said about the prophecy of the end times. Okay? Here we go. Let's go real quickly back to Matthew 24, and we're going to talk a little bit more about, one, the preachers that are being, amen, going to be taking their part. Okay? They need money. They got these big conglomerations. They got to pay the bills. But the churches are being shut down and trying to eliminate. One of the reasons is there's too many 501c3s in the world. They don't like giving up tax money to churches. 
They just had to because there was some clause in the declaration of the separation of state and church. <clears throat> now, see that you are not troubled. I'm in verse number four. Uh, for all these things must come, uh, must come. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. That's what I was looking for. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines. Watch that word famine. Pestilence, earthquakes, in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Now I'm coming down again. This is important and very important because we need to realize that when God gives us something, He gives us something to work with. Now, here it is. God said there are going to be pestilence and famines. Well, one such pestilence is in the world. But it's, it is, praise God, not the end yet. Notice he said, but the end is not yet. Why? Because you've got to see those pestilence, famines, and all of those things, even the false preachers, when they begin to increase in intensity and in frequency. Let me repeat. When those things begin to increase, mean go faster, go more potent, more people on TV talking about they got the answer to this and answer to that. When you see that increase like wills among the water courses, Isaiah 44 and 4, when you see those things increase and in, in intensity, meaning there's so many you can't even hardly turn off the TV without seeing, and in um, um, increasing in intensity and in how many times it happens. In acceleration, in other words. In other words, you see a pestilence, now you're going to see another pestilence, then you're going to see another pestilence, then you're going to see another disease. Okay? Now I'm going to take you to the plagues that are talked about in Revelation chapter 13. We're coming back. i got five minutes. We need to go over there real quickly. I would like for you to turn your Bibles to the book of Revelation chapter 13. And we're going to talk about this real quickly because the beast is rising up out of the water. And when the beast rises up out of the water, you're going to see that the beast is going to bring power with him. He's going to have so much power that he's going to have, amen, uh, uh, call down fire from heaven. He's going to have spirits jumping like frogs. He's going to have people believing that he is the God when he will be the false God. So, hold on to your hats. we we'll move to Revelation 13 real quickly. Alright, Revelation 13 and 1. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven horn heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns. And, um... Uh, on his head a blasphemous name. Now, the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet was like the feet of a bear. And his mouth was like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, great and great authority. I'm going to stop right there. That's verse 3 when we come back. But I need to stop right there because I need to bring you up to snuff on something that God said a long time ago. Okay, I am going to the world systems of, amen, Satan or satanic, amen, warfare. Okay, God says in Revelation also, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, for Satan has come down, and, amen, his wrath is really serious. Let's look at real carefully the inhabitants of the earth. These are the world systems. Embrace businesses, societies, politics, religion. Satan is the ruler and the power of darkness of this world. In Revelation, I mean Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11 and 12, he goes on to say, he said, be strong. Verse 10, he said, he said, be strong in the power 
which is the word, of the Lord. Okay? He said, and put on the whole arm of God so that you'll be able to stand during the wiles. That is the many avenues, the many tricks, the many deceits of Satan. Okay? I'm going to read that for you so you get it in great perspective. But what we must understand is in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11, and his position is so exalted that even the archangel called Michael dared insult him. Mm. Let me give you an example. Remember when Moses went to Pharaoh to ask Pharaoh to let God's people go? Pharaoh told him, he said, who is this God? God told Moses, go back and tell Pharaoh, you go back and tell him, I am who I am. If you need me to be darkness, I'll put devastation on you. This reminds me of that time. But in Jude 1-9, the respect that the angel had to have for another angel, for you see, angel or Satan was the archangel, he was the head angel, the cherubim rather, of God. He lost his position, but he never lost it in the world because God diminished him. He threw him from heaven like lightning, but he threw him down to the earth and into the ground, and he still had limited power on the earth. Actually, he controls all of the systems on the earth except God's plan, his ultimate plan. Mm. Okay, so let's go to Jude 1 and verse 7 real quickly, and then I've got to close. Jude 1 and verse 9, I'm sorry. Jude chapter 1, where uh, the devil and Moses was arguing over, the devil and uh, the archangel was arguing over Moses' body. And guess what the angel had to tell the devil? He had to tell them, God rebuked you. He could not curse him. I hear all you out there cursing, all oh, the devil this and the devil that. Stop giving the devil so much credit. Amen. God got his hand on the helm. God is steering this thing. You got to get on God's side before it's everlasting too late. All right, in the book of Jude, chapter 1, which is only one chapter, let's go down to verse 9. In verse 9, this is what it says, if I can find it. Okay, here we are. Uh, okay. Yet Micah, the archangel, that's a higher angel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dare not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to stop right there because I'm out of time and I need to bring some finality to this. As we look at this real closely, we find that Michael the archangel did not curse out or throw out or put out because Satan himself was a cherub angel. He's just an angel that will receive a different reward from God's angel. Him and his own people are going to be thrown in the lake of fire that's found over in Revelation, but also in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse uh, 11 through 13. Here, let me close. Uh, going back to Matthew 24 and get something that we can hold on to. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and virus places. All these things are the beginning of sorrow. Let me bring this out closely so I can close. These are the beginning of sorrow. You've got to understand the Bible from a Jewish perspective. What does God talk about when he talks about sorrow? When God talks about sorrow, he's talking about birth pain of a woman. Pay attention. You just might learn something. When God talks about sorrow, he's talking about a woman that's getting ready to deliver a child. Hold your finger. I'm going to go here real quickly. I want to go to Revelation 14 real quickly. I want to point something out to you. Uh, 12. 1. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, and a woman clothed with the sun and with the moon under her feet, and on her head uh, a garland of 12 stars. 
Now, let me stop there just quickly and give you a brief overview. This is talking about Israel is the one. And it's in heaven, a spiritual understanding. She's clothed with the sun. In other words, she's covered by God and his mighty star. And he said, because God said way back in Genesis 1.12, he said, I gave you the sun and the moon and the stars for a sign and for seasons. So realize what God is saying. He put everything into perspective. Okay, so the sun and moon under her feet and her head guarded or covering was 12 stars. That's the 12 children of Israel. Okay, that's the purpose of this whole thing. Then being with child, she cried out in labor. Now your other Bible probably said for sorrow pain. Mm -hmm. And in pain to give birth. Close it right there. I've got a French. Here's the end of the story. The end of the story is this, beloved. Okay? Mm -hmm. When God said these are the beginning of sorrows. Actually you've got to know who he's talking to and who's being talked to. Okay? And so when that happens, you need to understand this very, very carefully. He's talking directly to Israel. When he gave this prophecy, their disciples came and asked Jesus, what shall the science be of his coming? So he's talking to the disciples, or amen, the children of Israel. So when he said these are the beginning of sorrow, he said these are the beginning of birth pains of Israel, which means these are the beginning of the seven years of tribulation. First three and a half years are going to be with Israel. Now next time I'm going to bring in Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7 and Daniel chapter 9. And we're going to see how God prophesied that there will come an end to the tribulation of Israel. But it won't be before Amen. Two-thirds of Israel lose their life in the war in the battle of Armageddon. We're headed that way, beloved, because time is not long. And Satan is mad because he knows his time is short. May God bless you and may God keep you as my prayer. See you next time on the New Testament Church of Jesus Christ. Story about the end time prophecy told by Jesus Christ. I call him Yeshua HaMashiach. Good day. Cut it off.